So we're just hopping on now. We're talking about how to make your online audio, your streaming audio, your, your online worship experience audio uh, better or just as good as your in-person. The initial question was, our in-person worship sound is great. We've been working on it for years. Sounds really good. But when we go back and listen online, it does not sound the same or, or nearly as good. So how do we fix that? Yeah, well, and everyone's situation is just different. I think, right. you know, if you have, if you invested already into a digital soundboard and have the capability to record all of those tracks, if you will, and each track is your voice, the different vocalists, uh, your pastor's mics, your um, guitar, piano, drums, whatever you have for worship. Uh, recording those all individually through your board onto a computer and that way you can mix it specifically for um, so what the process that's happening in houses are mixing it for the in-person experience you're mixing the different levels as you go um, but then what it's do what we're talking about here is pre-recording everything after it's done recorded you do what's called post mixing post-production mixing where then you adjust the audios and then you can um, add that into your video and, and put it up from there so in person, then what I what I'd like to talk about too is so that's one option is pre recording, mixing down, posting that pre recorded um, experience. The other option then is um, when you're in person and, and you have one person dedicated to mixing your house, you need to have another person. And we all love finding volunteers in church, so I know that right away it's like oh, another person. We just found Dean, you know. Um, but if you find another person, this is just something you have to invest into and, and take the time to train somebody up um, to have somebody mixing the in-person experience intentionally. And then somebody also mixing the live experience while it's happening. Um, so typically what we would do there is have um, we have a digital soundboard. So we're able to run it um, both on, a, on the console itself and then also on an iPad on another device. And so we have somebody that mixes that audio specifically for the online experience. And what that takes from a gear standpoint is you already have all the gear you need ultimately, but what you need to do now is you need to have one of your other outputs being directly fed into your live experience. And that output is being mixed specifically by somebody else. So it's a pretty easy thing overall to implement. Um, I think we put that on a pedestal, like how are we going to do this? This is a big deal. Um, but finding, do you have another output you can use? If you do, getting that fed into wherever your live stream is going. If you're using Switcher Studio, getting that audio connected directly into that iPad. Um, if you're using any other way to go live, making sure that that direct audio is coming in. Um, and to make sure I don't skip over it, encouraging you to, if you're doing live and you have a sound system, make sure you're getting your audio from the microphone, from that sound system directly into your live feed. Uh, we've had a lot of questions come in where um, churches have started live streaming, but they just pick up what's in the room. They just pick up, um, you know, based off of that iPad. Right. And that's why it's so echoey and you don't hear things directly and you can't hear very well. Um, so just making sure that you have direct audio is what we call it into uh, your, your source, your streaming source. Um, and then anyways, back to the process. So having somebody then mixing that specifically, and I usually have, um, whether it's me or anybody on our team, step outside the sanctuary, listen to the Facebook live. Okay. That sounds pretty good. That sounds good. Oh, that person's way too quiet. I got to go, you know, and then you have your iPad there to be able to mix that. So hearing directly, if your stream is on your phone, pulling it up, listening to it, and then going back in and, and making the adjustments you need to make. What um, it's do, great to monitor. What's that? What do you do if, um, what, what do I do if I don't have a fancy board that does that? Yeah, then, I mean, it really comes down to, uh, in a lot of analog boards, some of the older boards have um, separate outputs, separate bus channels. So it's, it's checking your board, checking with your sound person and going, okay, how many outputs do we have? Do we just have our left and right main output that go to the speakers in the house? Um, if you do, okay, then it's probably time to start looking at investing some dollars into a better board, a more uh, versatile board where you're able to have more outputs. Um, and that's something we can help you with. We can guide you on brands and which people to go through the whole thing. Um, but if you have um, a board that already has that, then you're able to, to start working on these, on these processes. 
And what I would do is just have the conversation with your sound person right away. Um, they'll, they'll know right off the bat. Yep. We have this available. Um, and then it's just kind of the how to put it together. So reach out to us with questions there. Um, John, I think I found, so we talked about reason. We talked about, um, garage band. There's a free, another free digital audio workstation, which is what I do the producing part in and it's soundbridge.io. Mm -hmm. Um, so there you go. Free. There we go. And for lessons and, uh, quick how to videos on how to mix, um, post produce worship, um, contact us. Yeah. There's, you know, we did Adobe audition only because we had already invested into the Adobe suite where we had Photoshop, where we had a, a premiere pro, um, whatever else they have, um, no, whatever. But if you have Adobe already, you already have uh, Adobe Audition. And you also have Premiere Pro to help you with your video editing and things like that. If you have a Mac, GarageBand already comes with it. So you already have these ways to do these things um, that are already in your tools. And that's been a big thing for Nolan and I, especially as worship directors. Like we've, you know, there's always the the want to like, we got to buy the best thing, the newest thing. It's like, no, no, no. There's already things that you have that you don't even realize you have maybe um, that you can be doing a lot of these things with already. And it might be just taking something you bought years ago and retooling it a little bit, getting in a different position in your workflow and figuring out, okay, this is how we can get this done without having to spend a lot of money or any money at all. Yeah. Cause ultimately we all want to be good stewards of our money. Yeah. Um, and by our money, I mean of God's money. Um, yeah. We, we want to make sure that we're, we're faithfully using those dollars. And sometimes you do have to upgrade or buy a new soundboard to get what you want so that the mission, the word of, of God is spread as far as possible. Um, but let's make sure that we're using everything we have um, available to us at the time. I had a kind of along this, this line, I had a question come in this week. Um, a church reached out and said, we just had this big donation come in and we know we want to invest in the technology and into church online. How do we do this? Um, so we started working through um, exactly what they would need. And as I was getting to the audio part, he's like, oh, our, our soundboard is terrible. And I was like, okay, then these dollars that you had initially thought were going to go to kind of the video experience, the, the broadcasting experience, are going to have to first be spent on getting that audio um, situated. Um, and we're working through that. We're kind of figuring out what the best way forward is going to be and, and what the dollar amounts are. Um, but that is a big piece of it. I would never tell you, yep, but here's the switcher program you're going to want for live streaming. You're going to spend 12,000, let's say on this, you get it all in, you get it all set up. Nolan and I come out there and set it up with you. We work through with you on zoom, whatever it is. And then you do your first stream and your audio is terrible. Well, shoot, we should have spent some money first on getting that audio um, situated and fixed because that's ultimately going to make your in-person experiences better too. If, if your audio uh, gear is currently not working well for your live stream, well, then I bet it's not working very well in house. And how do we get these things cleaned up that are going to bring the most amount of value um, possible kind of as you go? And just to clarify, the Switcher Studio is not twelve thousand dollars. No, Switcher is not. Example. Switcher is much cleaner or cheaper. Yeah, um, hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars. Yeah, Switcher Studio. Um, I just want to. Yeah, no, no, no. I, that's good. Um, Switcher is definitely something I recommend, especially if you're if you can't spend a lot of money um, and you want to get this thing up quick. Switcher is very user friendly. Um, I still use it for certain projects. If we're outside, we use our Switcher Studio um, program and it works really well. And that used to be church entirely. And then this year our church said, okay, what's this going to take to do this well and clean and set us up for the future. And I just thank God that, that, that conversation came, um, came along and we were able to, to make some of those decisions. Right. Well, good. So, we got through, um, both of our questions for today. Yeah. And uh, if there's any, any other questions or you want to dive deeper within these two questions, um, reach out to us. We're happy to help however we can. Um, 
it's been just just a blessing for both John and I to be able to uh, work with different churches um, all over the place and help them do the best that they can in their context. And we're yeah. here for them. Times are changing, church is changing, and uh, we need to just not be afraid of it. We need to be excited about it, jump on the opportunities. Um, yes, sometimes it takes money, as, as things always have, and um, a lot of it, you know, I want to encourage you, don't put on a pedestal and be, and be nervous about it. Uh, reach out to us, figure out exactly what steps you can take. I think that's the hardest part. Um, in my journey early on, I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. So I reached out to a ton of different churches. What worked best? How did you do this? What tools did you use? Which programs did you use? And slowly but surely, we were able to, to just upgrade baby steps as we went, um, learn about the things we needed to save money for, um, what things we already were using that we didn't realize could be used in different ways um, and just kind of piece it all together as we went. Yeah, I think it's safe to say that we're just in the beginning stages mm -hmm. of what online worship, uh, what the internet, what technology is going to do um, with and for the church. Um, you know, it seems like it's so big because there's so much you can do, which is true, but we're only at the beginning. We've only just started um, and so we can be stubborn about it and just not change and not figure it out. Or we can embrace these tools, the technology, um, to follow the mission of Christ, to connect with people on all ends of the earth. Yeah. We, uh, I, one other question just came in. Um, do you recommend doing test streams when we get new equipment? If so, how do we do that? So the whole congregation doesn't get a notification that we're live. That's a great um, great question. I think there's a couple ways to do it. My first thought is don't go live. If you're working through audio, if you're working through uh, different ways to do video, um, don't go live, just record it. See if, see if whatever it is that you're using, your new equipment has just a recording, um, function. And I would just go live or go, uh, hit record and do some tests, have your band play, uh, have your pastor in there talking or whatever it is. I mean, you can, you can work through that as you need to, if it's just you, hit record, go up there as if you're the pastor and use the microphones and the gear you're using, record it, pull it out, play it back, listen to it. Okay. That didn't work very well. Make the adjustments, record it, do it again. Um, as for, as for testing the actual live, um, there are ways, um, in switcher studio, for instance, they have a test stream, I think it's called, um, button that instead of like going live, you can do a private stream right onto your page where then only you and the other admins, if you have other admins on your page can see it. Um, you can do a test stream, pull up your phone, your other device, whatever it is, see how it's looking, how it's working. Um, but yes, definitely don't go live to your church. We've done that a handful of times <laughs> where we'll go live on something. And then we're like, Oh shoot. Uh, another I option. Commenting. Yeah. Another option for, I mean, that that works perfectly and that's something i understand now a few years back i probably wouldn't understand that um so what we we have done is have a private group for your tech team and do it live to there so only the few people in your tech team can see it yeah early on before i knew there was the test stream function and switcher um i just started another page i made another page called doll media or something and then we went live to that page only and i had zero followers on there so it worked out perfectly um and then i made whoever you know was working our tech guy at the time um another admin on the page so we could both see it so create another page go live make a test page for your church whatever you need to do there uh facebook and youtube alike and then uh test things out i think testing is huge we've spent so much time i'm really glad you brought this up ryan uh, we spent so much time in our church testing stuff, trying stuff. Did this work? Did this not work? And, you know, the biggest thing is always, well, we only have so much time in the week. Yep, I get it. But if you spend the time up front learning, testing, trying, failing over and over, you're going to slowly start dialing in what that online experience is going to be. So just make sure you take the time to do that. Oh